Okay, in this final video for my GitHub tutorial, I just want to show you how you can go about creating a new repository for any of the practice problems that you might want to work on. Uh, and, and creating a repository for your practice programs and uploading them will enable me to give you the same kind of feedback on those programs that I will on the assignment programs. Uh, it's actually pretty straightforward, and once you do it once or twice, I think you'll find it becomes kind of second nature and you'll have no trouble with it at all. So as you can see, I'm currently here signed in with my demo DMIT student account and I'm on the GitHub dashboard. Any repositories that you have available, like I've mentioned before, will show up over here on the top left. And if you want to create a new repository, you can do so from here by just clicking the new button right up in the top left. Now it's also possible to create new repositories from your profile page. And I'll show you briefly at the end of this video where you would go to, to do that. Um, but for now, right from the GitHub dashboard, you can go ahead and click new. And that'll allow you to create a new repository for whatever project you want to upload. So in this example, I'm just going to create a test um, practice repo. And then if you want to provide a description, you can. It's optional. And then you'll need to choose either public or private for visibility on the repository. Now, if it's public, that means anyone who happens upon your profile on GitHub will be able to see your code. So I'm gonna recommend that you choose private for now, and then that enables you to choose who you want to see the repository. So uh, you can always change it to public later if, if once you've made all your updates, you want to show it off to people. But for now, I would say make it private, and then you can just add your instructor as a collaborator and then the two of you or anyone else that you want to collaborate with and then you can work with them to make updates and get feedback on your code don't worry about initializing with a readme or anything like that you're going to upload your own code so you can just go right ahead from this point and choose to click um, creating the repository and so once that's done you'll see you've got the repository name notice that this is different than your assignments in that the repository is created under your account, whereas the assignments are created under the CPSC 1012 organization account. So this is your repository, you own it, it exists under your profile, you can delete it by going to the settings, you can do whatever you want, it's entirely yours. Now if you scroll down, you'll see some options here for how to get started, and if you're familiar with Git and GitHub, and you already have a project or a, a Git, project initialized on your system and you want to just push it from there, that's fine. If you don't, again, super simple. You can just drag and drop. All you need to do is go here where it says upload an existing file. Now, I'm going to recommend you do this in a certain way just so that we can ensure that the feedback process works the same as it does for the assignments. So to hold off on uploading your existing project files for now, and let's just create a new file and I'm just going to call this readme.md. And you could really create this file as whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. It's basically a means to just get a first commit into the repository so that we can track the changes later. So I'm just going to say here, first commit file. And at the bottom, it's going to say, you know, create oops, readme.md. Uh, you could call this whatever you like, but that's what I'm going to leave it as. And so if you wanted to overwrite what this commit message is, you can do that stuff here. But for now, just commit it. And that'll be enough to get the project kind of into this state where it's got something in it to work with. The next step before uploading your project is going to be clicking on where it says branch here and typing in feedback. So this is the process of creating the feedback branch that'll end up becoming a pull request that we can use to track the feedback from any collaborators again in the same way as it's done for your assignments so i'm going to type in feedback here and then there's an option to create branch feedback from master so select that and that'll create a new branch and you'll see that now in the drop down there's branch feedback so that, that's it as far as the branching is concerned. You don't need to worry about setting up the pull request. Your instructor can do that. But make sure that both the master and the feedback branches exist in your repository before uploading your content. So once you've done that, 
switch back to your master branch. So make sure you see branch master here. And now you can go about uploading your files. So I'm going to click on upload files. Again, we get the nice drop target zone. You could click here to choose your files. I've got my finder open here. So I'm just going to drop the lesson one arithmetic project that we worked on earlier. I'm going to drop that in there. Oops. And you'll see that you can just drop on an entire folder right into GitHub. It'll go through and upload all the directories and the files in there. And it'll give you a default commit message. If, again, if you want to customize that message, you can. But once that's finished, I'm going to commit those changes. GitHub will take a moment to do its thing here. Um, but once it's done, your project is now uploaded to a repository on GitHub. At this time still, um, it's it's private, so only you can see this, this code, this project. So the final thing to do if you want to get feedback or collaborate with others is to add them as collaborators. Okay, so this is all fine and dandy for you to just work and have a place to back up your code, but no one else can see it. So once you've done that, then we go into settings. And in the second option here in this menu on the left, you want to choose manage access. And so once you click on that, it'll give you an overview of what the current access is. So right now it's private. You know, there are zero collaborators. Here is where you want to invite anyone that you would like to work with you on this repository. So in this example, I'm going to invite, you know, myself as the instructor. You can search by their handle if you have it. Oops, I don't need the at in front. So if you know your instructor's email address, that can work. But in this case, I'm just going to invite myself, Nathan Humphrey, hit enter or select, sorry, the, the user from the drop down. And then it, you get a button here to add to this repo. And so what that's going to do is it's going to add me as a collaborator. It's going to send me an email to invite me to access your repository. Okay. So you'll notice down here, it's pending an invite. So once I or your instructor gets that email, they'll be able to accept and then they will have access to your repository to collaborate and work with you on your project. So it's at that time, for example, that I'll um, set up a pull request and get the feedback mechanism going so that I can comment on any of your code and then we can begin to go back and forth there. Um, but that's the process. And so you can do that for any number of projects. If, if you want to create a repository per project or you want to create one repository per lesson and have all the, all the different programs you made for that lesson in there, all of that's up to you. I, I'm not going to mandate how you upload your, your code or your projects into GitHub, but this is the way in which you can go about creating the repository to do so. Okay, and the final thing I wanted to show you here is where you can access your repositories from your, your dashboard. So if you sign into GitHub and you're on the GitHub dashboard, notice here now we see the new repository that we've created. So all your repositories or recent ones will show up over here. And so you could just click it from the dashboard page. But if you instead go to your profile, which you can access from the drop down over here, you can, you can see in this menu, you could go direct to your profile, but you can also go and see all of your repositories from here too. I'll just go to the profile because it's effectively like the same thing. So on this page, you can see our contribution graph. So kind of a heat map of how much work you've done in the last little while, your latest contributions, etc. And then here in the menu, you'll see an option to view your repositories. And again, from here, not only can you go through and look at all of your repos, but you can go through that same process to create new repositories as well. And so that's it. I hope you found this video useful and I hope to see you and collaborate with you online soon.